All right, so crude oil edging a little bit higher today, uh, but obviously it settled down a lot from that blistering pace that resulted in many of these oil stocks going through the roof. Now they're pulling back as well. In fact, you know, energy was the only losing sector in the S&P last week. Today's move uh, this morning attributed to tensions in the Middle East. Now, that's decidedly different than a global reopening, which sparked that real big move. Uh, for more on where crude is going from here, I want to bring in the, the Bonson Group Managing Director, David Bonson. And David, last time we spoke, uh, you, you actually mentioned crude at 100 bucks. not necessarily a good thing. I didn't disagree with you there, but do you, do, are you concerned that it seems to have stalled around $60 and that some of these crude stocks are coming down pretty quick? No, this is exactly what you want. You don't want it to go much above 70. I think for a midstream, which is where we're more focused on the pipeline companies, 50 to 70 is about the sweet spot. Because remember, you want a lot of volume. You want a lot of global activity. If it gets too expensive, that hurts demand. It helps margins for the producers. But I don't think that's what our play is about with energy. We're more midstream focused. Okay, and of course, anytime we're talking crude and you say sweet spot, I, you know, it's a pum pum. I wish you had the drum there. Hey, you know, I want to talk about your Dividend Cafe piece on Friday. It was really phenomenal. Unlearning investment beliefs, and, and, and you know, I want to just kind of go over a few of them, particularly for the audience, uh, some of these truisms maybe. Number one, gold as a hedge against government irresponsibility. No longer working? No, I think that uh, if you look back over the last 10 years, I don't know what people could have possibly wanted to define irresponsibility and recklessness more than getting the national debt above 25 trillion, running one to two trillion dollar annual deficits and everything the Fed has done with QE one through four, zero interest rates and all of that stuff. Plus, it's been very uh, aggressive in Japan and Europe. This is like a dream environment for for people that believe gold is the antidote to irresponsibility and gold is completely flat for 10 years. I think that it's been yeah. a myth and I think really uh, it, this goes back many decades. Inflation and government spending, that relationship. No, obviously not. And you look at bond yields, uh, and you mentioned my DividendCafe.com piece. Um, I put a chart up from uh, United States spending, Europe spending, Japan, United Kingdom, massive increase in spending over 40 years, massive decrease in the long bond yields in all four geographical areas, the entire developed world. There's been an inverse relationship between government spending and right. inflation because of debt deflation, which is something we're really big on at the Bonson Group. I've got a minute to go. I want to ask you about, uh, I know you talked about uh, growth versus uh, value, the alter uh, alternating when they could coexist. I'm really curious about buybacks versus higher dividends. What's the best way for companies to, to, uh, to embrace uh, or, or to pay back shareholders? So, Charles, you're the best because you ask a dividend growth guy what's the best way to do it, and the answer is certainly <laughs> dividend payments, my friend. Um, look, buybacks often get announced, they get authorized, and then they don't even happen. And oftentimes you hear a company has bought $5 billion of their stock back, and you don't know that they issued $5 billion of new stock with stock options and employee and executive compensation. The first thing to get cut when companies are protecting cash flow is stock buy backs. Dividends are far more reliable, consistent, and reflect a better alignment between management and shareholders. And I can tell you right now, a lot of people now who hadn't been looking at dividends are looking, sort of sniffing them out right now, uh, feeling like maybe there should be a place in their portfolio for them. David Bonson, we always learn so much from you. Thank you, my friend.